Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Well, hello folks and welcome to another vlog. Uh, as you can see, I'm with my good friend, Paul Thompson. Uh, for those of you that have been following along on my YouTube channel, you know that Paul and I have uh, been away for the last 10 days, two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Going down the west coast of the United States. We started off in the Olympic National Park and then we worked our way down to the Redwoods in California. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll leave a link up in the corner. And Paul also has a YouTube channel. You can go and visit his channel and check out uh, videos from those areas as well. Now, we are on our way back home. Um, I'm off to SeaTac Airport, I'm dropping Paul off, and he's flying back to the UK. Uh, but we have a few hours to kill, so we figured <laughs> we'd, we'd uh, put together a video and talk a little bit about the trip, but mainly uh, some of the things that we learnt on the trip. And perhaps we can pass along uh, a few tips of, uh, of things that we found on this trip that might help you on your own trips. Uh, so we've come up with more or less five photography tips uh, and uh, hopefully they can help you out. So tip number one, when you're traveling, uh, my very first tip would be uh, keep your expectations low. And I don't know if Paul agrees with that, but... Um... Yeah, well, it's, it's difficult when you visit a new area because you, you haven't got an idea, really, of, of what to expect from an area. So you don't really want to go expecting too much of it straight away. Well, yeah, and I, yeah, and I think, I think the other problem is, is that we, you know, we'll, we see images from these areas that we want to go to, and that's partly, in a lot of cases, the reason why we go to these areas, but of yeah. course, they're always killer images taken in prime light and probably by a photographer that actually lives in the area or, yeah. or travels there often. So to expect those types of images on your first go around is pretty slim to no chance at all. <laughs> so I personally uh, like to keep my expectations low. Uh, I don't have any expectations when I go to a lot of these areas, um, just so that when I get there, whatever I come away with yeah. uh, is always a bonus, uh, so you're not disappointed. All right, tip number two, Paul. And that kind of leads <laughs> on from that last one, which is maximize the time that you have in an area. Uh, by that, I mean like researching the place online first, maybe check out a few images from it, look at Google Maps, something like that, see what's around the area first. Do you actually do that? Um, I, I'll check out images sometimes. I don't tend to look at the maps so much because it doesn't really, I find it, you can't really get a feel for an area just by looking at a map. No. I mean, I, mean, I, know, I know a lot of people use Google Maps and yeah. um, that can be really helpful. The, one of the, the problems with looking at images from an area is that it goes back to tip number one. Yeah all of a sudden you have these expectations. So you have to kind of look at these images without kind of well, thinking to yourself, okay, okay, this, this looks beautiful, but am I gonna go and, am I gonna go and get those conditions? And yeah. if you are hoping to get those conditions, then perhaps you might want to do a little bit of research on the time of year, the type of light you might want to expect. Yep. Um, but I, I do, I, I agree with Paul. I think, you know, looking at images from an area is a, is a great thing to do. I used to do it a lot with um, books, um, but now, of course, we have online stuff, so you can just Google an area, yeah. and of course, all these images come up, and you get a good idea of, of where you're going. And not necessarily for, for copying that composition, necessarily, but just getting an idea for what's in the area rather than, go, you know, expecting it to turn up and take the exact same shot. It's, you know, yeah. It gives you... yeah, and also research areas that kind of outline the main area where you perhaps might want to go, because sometimes you can find some n much nicer areas than the one you think you, you you want to go to. Yeah. Yeah. And as it turned out, we, we investigated a few areas, didn't we, in the in the Redwoods especially, but there yeah. was always one we kept going back to. Yeah, and, and the main reason why we kept going back to that one area is because I, I went there with uh, Sean Bagshaw uh, last year, 
and it maximized our time with the type of light that we, we had. And it turned out that that area was the only area that got fog. The yeah. rest of the, the coastline or the redwoods, because uh, it was quite bright, bright, sunny conditions, so it was very hard to get the light that we wanted, except for that one location, so we really lucked out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, tip number three. And this kind of depends on a number of things. Um, if you're on a, a family vacation with kids and wife and so on, this might be hard to do, but I would highly, highly recommend that if you do go to a specific area, is to stick it out in that one area as long as possible. Because just driving up to a location and expecting to get awesome shots on the first yeah. go around is very, very difficult. And Paul and I found that in the whole rainforest. Uh, we decided to spend a lot of the time in uh, the Hall of Mosses, which is a very popular tourist area. Paul had never been there. I've been there uh, a couple of times, but a very, very long time ago, and it's changed quite a bit. I, was, I think I was last there in that area about 15 years ago. Mm. And of course, the first thing, when we got there, the first thing was how many people were there. So <laughs> that made photography very difficult. Yeah. And then the light that we had was, well, it was, it was really, really difficult. Yeah. So we had to go early, early in the morning and late in the night. And we found that the best time to go into the Hall of Mosses was first thing in the morning. Later in the afternoon or, or evening, there were still quite a few people milling around. Yeah. Um, the light tended to be a little bit better in the evening, but we lucked out one morning on the third time in there where it clouded over and it gave us not awesome light, but pretty good light yeah. for, for those trees. Workable light anyway. Yeah, yeah, workable. The problem with bright sunshine in woodland, as a lot of you know, is that as you can see behind us, you get all these specular highlights and uh, it, it just makes life really, really difficult. So I would highly re recommend that you pick one or two areas rather than going to uh, multiple areas and trying to get tons and tons of photographs of different areas. Pick one or two areas and then just stick with those areas to get maximum conditions for what you're looking for yeah definitely definitely and, and when you get, get used to those locations as well you get more of a feel for the location so you get to know what happens in an area where light falls where you know all those yeah. conditions you're waiting for you get to experience what's happening in an area and i think that really helps to maximize the best photos you can get from an area yeah, and, it, and it's almost like having, you know, when you, when you have a, an area that's local to you that you get to know intimately, it's kind of the same thing, except obviously over a shorter period of time. But I think that even uh, three days in the Ho rainforest, after a while, we got to know the area quite, quite well. Yeah. And actually, um, the first day, uh, the light was, was just awful. So we decided to uh, take photographs of the bunchberry, which is, was beautiful, which was my first video and, and Paul's. Yeah. And uh, I came away with some shots that I was really happy with. So, yeah. you know, again, that comes down to expectations and trying to keep an open mind to other things besides, you know, what the ultimate goal is. Yeah. I mean, if you if you turn up with the, the idea you're going to get forest photography, for example, and the conditions aren't there, then definitely looking for these smaller scenes in an area. Yeah really helps so eh? yeah and and both you and i have done that in the past and with videos is you know we end up concentrating on the on the smaller scenes just because the light's just not that great for the scenes we're after yeah for sure for tip number five paul is make sure you review your images on a bigger screen when you if you can if you've got your laptop or something with you make sure you go back have a look at the image on screen because you get a better idea whether you need to move your compositions one way or another. I find it really difficult to see on the back of a camera screen those little micro adjust adjustments you can make. Yeah, I, I think it's really helpful. Uh, obviously, you need some way of viewing your, your photographs or if you have a laptop, that really helps. Uh, and, and we try to do that in workshops as well where you, know, you might go to a location one day and if you have time to review those images, and an opportunity to go back to those locations and you can adjust your compositions, you know, assuming that you have similar, uh, you know, conditions, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, scenes like woodlands and that, I mean, especially when it's cloudy out, then 
you can more or less get the same compositions uh, and you can fine tune them the way you want them. Yeah. Obviously, if you're only there for an hour or so and then you move on to another location, then you don't have that, that opportunity. And, sure. and both Paul and I do that often. I'll go to a location and uh, get my images back on the computer at home and then you see that there might be a couple of problems with them, so then go back to those locations. And that's, and that's why when you shoot locally, uh, it's really great because you can, you can obviously go back to those spots. But when you're traveling, it kind of relates to what we were saying earlier. It's just so much nicer if you can spend a, you know, a couple of days or at least so that you can fine tune your photography. Yeah, and I found that while I was there actually, there was a composition I really wanted to move. Um, well, I, I viewed it on screen and I realized that two of the trees that I had in the composition were overlapping and I showed you it and yeah. you suggested I maybe move to the left slightly. So I wanted to go back and refine that and that's when I kind of made a bit of a mistake. Yes. I want to take this opportunity to thank Squarespace for continuing to support my channel and sponsoring this week's video. My favorite feature of my Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page from my desktop computer or on the fly using the Squarespace app from my smartphone. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and allows changing a page or design quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Sound interesting? Why not head on over to squarespace.com and try it for free if you like the platform, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. Okay, and that brings us to uh, unexpected tip number s bonus six. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, uh, so do you want to tell this, Paul, or should yeah, I? Yeah, I'll tell them. <laughs> All right. So Paul made a really bad amateur mistake, <laughs> but we'll, I'll let him... For you see him taking delight in telling you this, <laughs> by the way. So, so it leads on from us um, reviewing our images on the computer screen. I had actually adjusted my composition and I was showing Adam on the back of the screen just how I'd moved everything across. But what I did was, is I was showing him with the memory card actually in the computer. So what I did was, I'd finished showing him and I deleted everything thinking that I'd put it on my external hard drive, which is what I was doing every night, which is a mistake in itself. I shouldn't have really been deleting it, but I was just getting myself into the habit of transferring everything to the uh, hard drive and then um, deleting everything so that I had plenty of space. Now, of course, everybody has their own system and there's no wrong or right way to do it. I mean, I do it quite differently to Paul. I don't delete anything from my cards until I've actually got everything on my main hard drive at home and backups and so on and so forth. Uh, the way Paul does it, he, he backs it up onto two hard drives and then he deletes it from his card. Uh, but of course, the the danger is, is that- You forget you too, forget, good, yeah. Especially at your age, Paul. Yeah, all and, right. <laughs> uh, and you know, I mean, I probably wouldn't do that. Um, I would recommend you don't do that after doing yeah, it this time, you, actually. I think you're probably better off to buy extra cards and if, if you get a card that's full, just put a new card in. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I, that I do it is uh, I have one of these SD cards here, hard drive. I download everything to that, plus I keep everything on the cards that I have. Now, the way I have it set up right now, I just have everything on one card, which is a bit of a, a risk. Uh, an even better way is if you have, most cameras now have two card slots. Yeah. So you can you can have them copied onto both cards. So then you have two copies and then a hard drive. But you know, like I said, everybody's different. Yeah. Uh, Paul screwed up. I'm sure he won't. And I'm now gonna change the way I do everything, I think. Yeah, he, definitely. He probably won't do that again. So um, anyway, uh, lesson learnt. Uh, I'm sure he won't do it again. Uh, right, I, I think that's uh, it for our quick top five or six tips. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> and uh, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, let us know if you have uh, any kind of top tips that you want to share with uh, the audience or with myself and Paul. Uh, please write them down in the comments. Uh, we're always happy to receive them. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give the old thumbs up. All right, folks. Thanks ever so much. And uh, until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.